time here. You've never been here before. Grateful to have you. And it uh, means the world to us, really does. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and launch right into what I believe God's put on my heart for today. Uh, and let me just let you know about this. I believe today is small group launch, am I right? Small groups are launching, so if you haven't signed up for one of those, I know there's paper copies out there. Uh, I'll let you know what small groups we have uh, uh, going on. If you haven't signed up for one, uh, you can go on our app and do that. There are a lot of different ways you can uh, get involved with what's happening here. Small groups this, this season only last six weeks as opposed to the eight weeks. So uh, they, ha- they happen fast throughout the summer season. And uh, I don't know if it looks like summer right now, but man, anybody wondering if summer's coming? Um, it is, trust me. It'd be 90 here in a couple of weeks, and you'll be complaining about that. But um, uh, I just want to come back to you today. We're, we're almost kind of like almost, I call it halfway through the year, um, maybe another month or so. But, but we're at that spot, that sweet spot. If we're not careful, we'll forget where we're going. We'll forget where we're going as a church. And uh, you've already heard a lot of songs about it. You heard Seth mention it. And we launched out in this year, really, just we want to endeavor and discover together how much God's goodness is available to us and how much it's already been working in our life. We just want to come to the end of the year and really know how good he is. And um, sometimes that's easy to forget. And sometimes that's easy this far into a year to see uh, life come at you, a lot of life changes, a uh, good friend of ours, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, a little bit more than that now, went on home to be with the Lord, affected a lot of us, and um, Missy, you know that, and uh, so if you're not careful, you can look at an event like that as, as hard as it is for anybody to lose anybody to go on home to be with the Lord and forget that God's still good Amen. And, and be able to see the goodness in something like that. Now, I'm not saying death is good. I'm saying that what comes after death for the believer is good. You know, we have eternity. We have a secure place in heaven for if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, you've got Jesus as the Lord of your life. Uh, Death is just a comma to your life. It's actually the shortest part of the life that you'll be living is the one here on this earth. Uh, It's real short compared to eternity. 80 years is not that long, guys. And uh, I'm closer to it than I ever have been. And uh, I get to watch that up close with my in-laws. Uh, in their 80s, middle 80s now, and uh, it's, it doesn't take long to come to you. And, uh, but at that comma, it's where the beautiful part of life, the long eternity of life begins, and you're just going to live for eternity, live forever. That's hard for us to imagine because we're limited in our thoughts. We're limited in what our knowledge is here on this earth. And, uh, but I just challenge you, uh, as we go down this road, I'm going to focus on really two things today, send you back out with a reminder of just a couple of things. And uh, the, how bad the devil is and how good God is. And, uh, but I will say this, uh, not everything is the devil's fault. Um, not everything is God's fault, is what people try to make it sound like. God's doing a lot of things that he's not doing, that people are saying he's doing. And a lot of people are saying the devil's doing a lot of things that he's not doing. It's just you're making mistakes. You're just being stupid. And, um, you know, anybody ever been stupid before? You know, said, done some things you wish you didn't do, Right? Thank God for his mercy. Uh, we're where we are. All right? Think about it. Um, so don't, don't let's take what I'm saying, share with you today as some of the things that uh, everything's the devil's fault. But you do need to know what he does. Um, and, and then learn to make wiser choices and make some better decisions down the road. And the word of God will help you do that if you apply it. You learn to live it and apply it to yourself. Well, when I think about what I want to share with you today, I'm reminded of Psalm 133. It's verses 1 and 3, and you don't have to turn there on these. Uh, some of these will pop up on the screen. But it reads this way. It's what, actually, it's one of my favorite scriptures. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's just good. It's just good to be together. Tell somebody it's so good to be together. And then he goes on in verse 3, and he says it this way, For there the Lord commanded the blessing, commanded his goodness. Where? Where people are in unity. Uh, That's why there's so much division in the world, because the devil doesn't want goodness to be shown or seen. So division comes to mess that all up. But not here at Coastal. We're in unity. We're we're not perfect. I get that. But he says, where where you're dwelling in this, it's a purpose of yours. He says that I'm going to command. That means I'm going to make sure that that blessing of goodness is there. Second Peter chapter 1, I read this to you at the beginning of the year in the easy to read version, 12 through 14, says you already know these things. So some of the things I'm going to share with you, you already know. 
You're very strong in the truth you have, but I'm always going to help you remember them while I'm still living on this earth. That's part of my job. It's part of what I'm called to do. I think it's right for me to remind you of them. I can't begin to tell you how much that witnesses with my spirit many, many times because I forget things. And I need people, thank God for my wife. She helps me remember a lot of things. And uh, she's very helpful to me. Sometimes we need to be reminded of something that's even still fresh. So that we make sure it doesn't ever get stale. We don't ever walk away from it. And the best way to do that is to keep putting it out there in front of us. So go with me to Psalm 145, verses 7 through 9. This is our text for the year. This is really just kind of the purpose direction that's keeping us on course. And um, I'm just going to exhort through it just a little bit right now, if you don't mind. And then I'll get to the two things, and and then you'll be able to go home. And uh, get ready to be a part of an amazing moment in some kid's life and second service for graduation. Psalm 145, 7 through 9. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They'll sing with joy about your righteousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone, not just the ones that are good. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. Remember, he is Elohim of Elohim. He is the strong creating God. He created all the earth and all the heavens and all the good that is in them. The curse came in and has perverted what his creation was and is. And so let's go back up here real quick. Everyone will share. That word share jumped out at me a couple weeks ago. Knowing I was going to go in this direction today, having just this one service, the word share kind of jumped out at me, and I've just been kind of muttering it back and forth in my heart as I've been going along these couple weeks. And the the word share, uh, it means this, have in common, so we have something in common, and then they actually enjoy this with other people. So it's not complete if you just have it in common, but you're not enjoying it with other people. Sometimes we get it, but we don't take it and keep it and enjoy it with some other people. It's not complete unless you do. But can I step away from the New Living Translation of the word share and go back to the King James and uh, bring a word into this that's used there? It says in the King James where the word share is, it says abundantly uttered. The word utter is really an interesting word. Because what he's saying is everyone will abundantly utter the story of your wonderful goodness. The word utter, it, it means this. I wrote this down. It means to gush forth, belch out. It means to pour out. Okay? But listen to this uh, front. This is the front definition of this word. They will have a smell about them, good or bad. It means those that utter the goodness of God, they will have an odor about them, good or bad. Meaning this, if his goodness is in your life, it's going to be a good odor. If bad, uh, and and I don't know how he gets that dirty. Uh, I I know what kind of job he does. And his clothes, that we wash them, we power steam them, we double up on detergent, we put softener in them, we put smell good stuff on them, and they still smell like work. It's just not a good smell. I can remember working on a farm for a little while, and uh, I worked on a hog farm for, for a whole summer. One of the best experiences I ever had in my whole life was putting in tobacco and working in the hog pen. And uh, that smell, I still remember. I don't like actually pork chops and pork a whole lot today because every time I eat it, I smell that bad odor of that pig. Now, if it's cooked right, I'll eat it. But, man, I have to really get past that odor. I fished for a living for a little while. And I can remember after a whole summer of fishing and over a whole season of fishing, that smell just got in my clothes. And and you just throw clothes away after a while because you just can't get it out. And actually, you get to the point where you, here's where it gets dangerous, you don't smell the fish anymore. You don't smell the pig anymore. Huh? You, you don't smell the grease and grime that Chase has on himself all the day because you get used to it and you don't realize you have a bad odor about yourself. It's just like that. Uh, I'm not going to meddle on, on a bunch of uh, stuff out there to cover odors today, but um, we, you know, most of us use deodorant. Why? So you don't smell bad. Well, that's what is being said here. That if you've got the goodness of God permeating out of yourself all around you, you're going to have a good smell. 
You're going to have an odor about you that people want to be around, that people are going to want to know why, what is it about that person? Not just your smile. What is it about them? And then he goes on and answers and said, because they'll be singing about your righteousness, not just about God's righteousness and who he is, but more so about who you are and the righteousness of who you are in God. And then he goes on and he says, and the Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry. Uh, Tell somebody right next to you, say, man, he's really slow. slow. Verse 9, I'll skip down. He says, the Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. I gave you this quote at the beginning of the year, and I just want to read it to you one more time. We cannot separate what is good from God. You cannot have goodness without God, just as you cannot have God without goodness, because God alone is good. Now, turn in your Bibles with me if you have your Bible or or your device or whatever you're using. Go with me to John chapter 10. We're going to look at John chapter 10 this morning in the Amplified Version. Let's talk about some things. Let's talk about devil. Let's talk about God. Let's kind of define the two of them together, who's what and who, and and, and kind of get a picture of what they look like. John 10, 10 says, The thief cometh only to in order to steal and kill and destroy... I came that they may have life and have it in abundance to the full tilt till it overflows. Now, if you look at the word thief in its original um, uh, commentary of writing, a lot of times we reference this, and I will today because of some other scriptures, we reference this as the devil. And there's no one that knew the devil any more than Jesus himself. So, yes, you can use this scripture to represent the devil, which I will. But it also, Jesus was using this from an Old Testament way of understanding of uh, scholars that would come in with bad doctrine and would steal what you have because they would uh, confuse you with bad doctrine. And people would be pulled away and they would actually not believe God because of the bad doctrine. And so we say, he's letting us know that, look, there'll be people that will make you think that they know God and they're going to come alongside you. And if you don't know God, you can be confused and deceived. But if you follow through the scripture, you go through uh, where we'll go here in a few minutes, you're going to find out that the thief, all thief also represents the devil because that's just who he is. It's his character. He's the root of all of it anyway. So when we see the word thief, he says, the thief only comes in order to steal, kill, and destroy So say this with me, devil bad, bad. God good. good. Make it simple. Devil bad, God good. It's real simple to remember for me. So if I see something that doesn't bring peace in my life, I I can make a mistake. I get that. I, I see death. I see sickness. I see pain. I see poverty. I see those things. Any of those things in my life that are represented in, that show up in my life, I know God didn't bring that to me because it's not who he is. I may have made choices that get me here, but I can't blame it. I can blame myself a little bit, but don't stay on the blame game too long. Come back into righteousness and go back into who God is and his goodness and let him redeem you and bring you up and out of that. But, uh, but remember that it's, it's anything that's not representing good is devil bad. Okay? So when you hear the, uh, what's going on in the world, you hear what's uh, on the news, and you see things that all the destruction, and think God's not doing those things to judge man. All right? God's not bringing bad storms to judge a man. He's not bringing bad... Why would you serve a God that would cause a, a, a hurricane that would wipe a whole uh, town out? Why? A tornado. That's not from God. God's not in the business of killing people. He's in the business of keeping people alive or redeeming people to eternity to live forever. That's who he is. He's a good God. Those are results of the curse. Those are the results of the fall of man. Jesus redeemed us from the fall. And the moment that Adam fell, the curse of sin came into this world. And what was created well and good with no fault to it, no harm to it, no destruct, no, no, uh, 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 no uh, um, compromise to it, was compromised at the fall of man. And then that curse came in and now you see death. Death is the recipient, is the result of sin. So when you put those two things, thoughts together, you have to come back to the central truth, devil bad, God good. You hear me? Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. <clears throat> now this is, you probably don't have this translation. This is the new revised standard version, and I'm not even sure if they could find it back there. It just comes closer to the original writing of the the, uh, Greek here, so that's why I use it. 
Discipline yourselves. Okay, discipline, that means I have to maybe be responsible. Tell somebody, time to be responsible. So discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Why do I keep alert? Because something's getting ready to happen. Something might come my way. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Looking for someone. The Bible says you're hidden. The Bible says that you're covered. And the only time that you can come outside of that covering is when you take yourself out. We'll learn today maybe a couple ways I take myself out of the covering in the favor of God to give myself exposed to the enemy. But look at verse 9. What does it say? Resist him. So when the devil comes and you see some of these good, some of these bad maybe come in my, my direction and you know, hey, uh, maybe you, you're, you're honest with yourself. I'm admitting that maybe I made a mistake. I repent, ask forgiveness. I get back into my covering in the righteousness of God. Now, devil, I'm going to stand up against you. But the word resist means I'm going to actually take a stand and I'm actually become like a wall against that coming into my life. You're not getting to my kids. No, you're not getting to my kids, you're not taking my kids, you can't have my kids, you can't have my wife, you can't have my house, you can't have my life, you can't have my boat, you can't have my car, everything. You ain't getting none of it. Because that's under the covering of God and it belongs to God. I, if I look at everything in my life that belongs to God, I have a place to resist the devil. Listen to what it says. Steadfast in your faith. Your conviction, your moral conviction, your value conviction. Your righteousness conviction, who I am in God, my faith conviction said, no. He goes on to say, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Now, I don't take away from an immediate moment of, of maybe grief or something you're walking through and it feels like you're alone and you're the only person. We all feel that way at some time. But we have to be maybe bigger thought in our mind and realize that there are, there are other people going. Don't, don't, I'm careful to say this because I don't want to make light of maybe what you're walking in or what you're walking through. But I have to make a little bit light. The world is going through a bunch of stuff, any people around you. If we come back to the central truth, I'm going to resist the bad and I'm going to stay with the good, then I have the covering and the favor of God in my life. Go with me to James chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. I'll read this in two translations. Very similar terms, very similar words. Say it with me. Devil bad, God good. <clears throat> Submit yourselves therefore to God. Okay, there's a responsibility again that I have to come up underneath of God. Submit means to come alongside of the principles and the values mentioned in the scripture for me to live by. Corinthians, Paul shared with the Corinthian church, you can do anything that you want, just some things are not beneficial. We want to learn through the scriptures what's not beneficial and then choose not to do that because that means I'm going to humble myself under the mighty hand of God that he will exalt me in due time and then I'm going to resist the enemy in my life. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. <laughs> Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. All right? I'm going to scare you just a little bit, okay? Because I just want to act out what the message says of this scripture. It says, yell aloud no to the devil and watch him make himself scarce. No, devil! The voice of the devil, the voice of the world, the Bible says that the world is full of voices. There's only one voice the Bible says that my sheep know that voice and hear the voice of a shepherd's the only one that they will follow. Only if we're, but if we're listening to all the other voices, and when that loud voice comes to you and begins to tell you anything opposite of God's goodness, maybe I just might yell a little bit louder. I'm not saying you got to go physically yell, but, but you understand the point. Guys, the devil's a liar, he's a thief, he's a destroyer. And he does not want you to have God's goodness in your life. Say it with me. Devil bad. <clears throat> Just like your parents want you to have good in your life, uh, God's your heavenly father wants you to have the same thing. He wants you to have health. He wants you to have your wellness. He wants you to have prosperity. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have uh, favor surrounding you. That's the God that we know. Jesus said, what he said, I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. He can't change. And anything opposite of that is saying that he's changed and he won't change. 
Hebrews 13, 8, what does it say? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Practice that with me. Point to the left. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Devil bad, God good. <clears throat> so here you go. Let me talk about two keys. How can I resist the devil? And how can I make sure, make myself aware, just revisit some thoughts, just remind yourself, how can I revisit a thought and make sure that I'm, I'm aware of God's goodness in my life? And, and if I see that devil bad thing show up in my life and I resist him, how, how, can I, how can I do some of that? Real simple, real basic, ABC truth of the scripture today. I want you to hear it. Go into Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to look at verses 23 through 25 here. And just exhort on a couple of these for a moment, and then I'm going to let you go. Easy to forget, my friends. Easy to forget. And what makes us forget the most is the fact of life that we're having to live. Um, you know, I can, I can maybe attest to some of this over the past year and a half, some of the events that have happened in our own personal life in our own home. Not sin, nothing like that. Just life, just, just things that have come up against us. And I've been tempted... Uh, very much tempted at many times to, to just, to be honest with you, not yell at the devil, but yell at God. Like, God, where are you? When are you going to show up here? This would be a good time to show up because I'm not enjoying this at all. And I'm grateful that he's, passion, that he's merciful, that he's patient, that he's okay with me, maybe voicing some of those uh, thoughts, some of those frustrations. I mean, that he, that's the part of the relationship that you have with him. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's, he's, Jeho he's, the re he's Jehovah. He's the relational God. He wants you to come. Now listen, I love what, I think Seth said something here a few minutes ago. He was having a moment, and then all of a sudden he says, but I'm supposed to be happy today. I get happy as our destination, but sometimes I don't necessarily want to be happy for a while. But God's not going to leave you in unhappy for a while because there's too much word to bring you up and out of unhappy. And the more you start to see the goodness of God and begin to identify with who you are in Christ and walk out of that, you can't be unhappy. It, 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 let me say it this way. <clears throat> you ever been unhappy and happy at the same time? You can do that in God. I'm not enjoying my circumstances, but I'm happy that there is an end to this. I'm happy that thanks be unto God, he always causes me to triumph. I'm happy that I know his promises will be fulfilled. I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm afraid right now, but I'm happy that angels are watching over and taking care of me and keeping me safe. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy right now because, you know, the checking account doesn't really show what it should be, should be showing. Father, I forgive me for, you know, running that credit card thing way up high. I, I'm, I'm sorry for that, but now we need to do something about it. I'm not happy, but I'm grateful that you are my Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You see the difference? When I come back and I begin to identify with God's goodness and who he is, it changes the thought life that, that I'm living. Two keys to help me do that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope. Without wavering, for he who promises reliable, trustworthy, and faithful to his word. Number one key to, hold, to, to, to uh, uh, resisting the devil and, and keeping yourself aware of God's goodness is hold fast to your confession of faith. Why do you think you've got to hold fast? Because something's trying to take away from you. It just might be devil. It just might be life. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Proverbs 18, 20 through 21. Amplified. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Your faith, okay, this is a little bit off, off course a little bit. <clears throat> your, your faith works two ways, only two ways, by what you believe and then what you confess. I believe in my heart, and I confess the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And it, 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 that sets you on the course at that point, that that's how this thing is going to work from then on. The key to believing and the key to speaking and saying and holding fast, I've got to be doing some hearing. Hearing and hearing the word that gives me the confidence in the promise in the word that I have. Just a reminder. I know you guys know this. But when I come to this place and I realize that my words are kind of starting to get away from me, I just might be creating a bad odor around me 
And it's my, maybe my own fault of that. And I want to get back into that good odor. I want to get back into that place where I know the goodness of God is working. Listen to this out of the message translation. Proverbs 18, 20 through 21. Words satisfy the mind. I think that's interesting. Words satisfy the mind as much as fruit does the stomach. Good talk is as gratifying as a good harvest. In other words, your words are directly connected to the harvest that you're having. Tell somebody, I really like you right now. Just take a checkup of what you're holding fast to. What is the confession coming out of your mouth? Is it confessing? Listen, now, now hold on with me, listen. I can step into this place, and this, this is where kind of the technicality, this is kind of the technical side of confession, okay? There is a truth to this. I can stand here, thanks be unto God, you always cause me to triumph. You are my provider. You're so amazing. I love you. You're good. You got my back. Angels are watching over me. I am the righteousness of God. And then I get up in the morning and I go to the job and I'm sitting at the work and I get around the bad smell of the bad odor of, of, of the words that may not necessarily be supporting that. And, in, and then after a while, I'm hanging around it long enough, that smell starts to get on me. And, 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 there's, and they're talking about how bad it is, how high the gas prices are, how bad the weather is. And before long, that's coming out of your mouth at the same time. You just nullified everything you said on that side. The Bible says a man that wavers, that tossed to and fro, is like the, that wavers in his words is like a man tossed to and fro in a ship. You're, you're moving back and forth. But that's not who you are. You're Coastal Family Church. You are folks that hold fast to the confession of your faith that God is good here and there. Just a reminder. Key number two. <clears throat> Skipping a whole bunch here. I see we're kind of out of time. Hebrews chapter 10, 24 through 25. Key number two, to make sure I'm resisting the devil. Who's bad? Say devil bad. God good. And I want to make sure I'm aware of God's goodness working in my life. Number two, and let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds. Not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more faithfully as you see day, the day of Christ's return approaching, Key number two, encourage one another. Can you do this with me and just indulge yourself? Tell somebody next to you and say, he's a good God. Tell somebody else, say, man, he's a good God. All right, now make it personal. Say, he's been good to me. Come on, tell somebody, he's been good to me. Come on, Joe, tell her, he's been good to us. He's been good to us. There's something that happens when you begin to get around people now, 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 and I'm not saying to get so, so smelling so good that you're not any good. You know what I mean? You're no good to anyone. You ever been around somebody that just put too much perfume on? Too much cologne on? Okay. You can put so much of this cologne on <laughs> that you're no good to nobody else but yourself. Enjoy that for a while, but let some of it wear off and get back out there and be real, okay? There's a common sense side to the things of God. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8, if I can read that to you. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. So take heart. Listen to the, next, the way this says this. Come, let us tell the Lord's greatness. Did you see that? Come, let us. Us. Not just me. Us. And then he goes on. Let us exalt his name alone. It's not what it says. Let us exalt his name together. This is why Worship Wednesday is so important to Coastal Family Church right now, the first Wednesday of June, July, and August. We're coming together, and we're going to exalt the name of our Lord, Elohim of Elohims, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. We're going to begin to exalt his name and exalt his goodness together. And you'll begin to see the sweet smelling savor that get, begins to get on you that, that we just might be able to make a difference out there in this county and this community by what's getting on us just by one day a month. It's not a day to skip. Okay, it's not, a, it's not just, uh, don't get me wrong, I don't want to take away, I think this is probably the most, one of the most important steps to it, is the family environment that we bring to the table in the worship part of it, and then the family environment out there. You don't have to have kids to have family, okay, that's not what this is about. We are a family coming together. 
Okay, this is just not kid night, but I get that. We're going to make sure that that's a provided for. But there's something to this. Let us exalt his name together. And he goes on and says, <clears throat> prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened and he saved me from all my trouble. That's what you're telling each other. I'm looking at you when I'm encouraging you and I'm standing beside you. I'm saying, look, man, when I was having a bad moment, I looked up and he stepped in. When I was having a bad moment physically, I came and got along somebody and they began to pray for me. They put their hand on me, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And guess what, man? I, I recovered. I know you're sick. Let me lay hands on you right now. Let's go ahead and take care of that right now. This is not good for you to be sick. You don't need to go be spending all this money on those pills just to stay alive. Come on. Let, let's just take care of that right now. Let's just get in the green. Come on, let's, the power of agreement begins to work. The Bible says the prayers of a righteous man makes much power available. And when you begin to get into unity, you begin to get into this place together. The Bible says here, the very last part of that, it says, Oh, the joys of those who will take refuge in him. Those. So number two, encourage one another in the goodness of God. Stand up with me as we sing this song together. Come on, sing it together. It's your nature. It's your you nature. You can't help it. What could stop all your goodness? Since forever, oh. you've been like this. Come on. What could stop all your oh, come goodness? He's been good to you, Sam. Come on. Mr. Wayne, he's been good to you a lot of years, a lot of years. Come on. He's good to you guys. He brought you here for a reason. He's good to you, man. He's good to you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, but you can help me. Stephen Furtick was being interviewed by Crouch. What's Crouch's son's name? No, no, that's the dad. Um, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it, this is the statement that I heard, and it just rung a bell in me again. That sometimes when, when, when you don't see God the most is when he's working the most. That's when this song of the goodness needs to be coming out the most. Come on, when, 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 that's when you're resisting. That's when you're saying, devil, bad, God, good. That's when you're standing up, up, up against that enemy and you're beginning to hold fast to that confession. That's when you're getting around those people. I don't know, but Mac, I need you, brother. I need you sometimes. Bo, I need you sometimes. When I can get on the phone and I can, and, and now today's world is texting, I get that. But text works sometimes for me. Just send me a text. I don't have hours to talk. Just send me a text. It works. 
But what I'm doing is, is I'm stirring up. I'm resisting the enemy because I'm realizing that, that God, I'm reminding myself that he's only good. God's only good. And it helps my perspective get to back to, to where I can begin to say, hey, okay, that's, that, that's not God right there. That, that's not him. Okay, right, let me get back into that place where I'm starting to smell good again. Let me get away from the pigs. Let me get away from. Let me get away from the that that uh, the, the fish that's on my life. I, I don't want to yield into that too long, to where it begins to take me away from the promises of God. Because look, He's a good God, and that's what's set in store for us for this year. Sing it with us one more time. Come on, close your eyes, lift your hands with it if you're comfortable with that. Sing this with us. Come on, come on. Only ever good to me. Only ever good. Only ever good. Only ever good to me. That's all you've ever oh, been. Come on. That's all, all you're gonna, gonna be. Only ever good, only ever good, only ever good to me. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. Man, we love you so much. Just love you for who you are. Father, we do ask forgiveness for the times that we waver and question that. Father, we, the circumstances sometimes don't present or show us that goodness. We admit that. Sometimes it's our fault. Sometimes it's the devil. But I'm asking you, you gave us your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to come alongside us in those moments to help us. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking for this family here this morning. I'm asking that you'll come alongside us just this week right now. Come alongside us and remind us in those moments where it might be a little bit dark, those moments we get challenged or tested. Remind us of how to resist. Remind us how to hold fast. Remind us how to just, hey, maybe text that person. Get in that place of encouragement just to walk in the goodness of God so that we have that smell upon us of your spirit. And Father, if there's anybody in this house this morning, They've never been introduced to your goodness for the first time. They, they, they don't even know you yet. I, I know you've already introduced yourself to them a little bit since we've been here, but will you introduce yourself to them in a bigger way? That you want to be their Father, you want to be their Lord, you want to be their Savior, and you want to help them fulfill their God-given purpose. I pray if there's anybody here right now, and that's where you are, you're in that place of question whether you're Maybe you walked away from God. Maybe, maybe that you had Him as a relationship side, you know, at one point in your life, but now you just kind of walked away. But you want to come back to that. Get, that. get that new boot, new start. Right now, we want to pray with you. And I'm going to ask you, the Bible says that if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. Now, I'm going to ask you to come up, but I am going to ask you to raise your hand. If you want to be prayed for, for salvation for the very first time, or you want to recommit your life to serving God, not being just a good person, but loving and serving God, raise your hand this morning. I want to pray with you. I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. I see that hand over here. I see that hand over here. Thank you so much. Oh, glory to God. I see that hand over there. Glory, 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 glory be to God. Just a couple more seconds. Greatest story ever to be told is yours and he wants to write it and he wants to write it with purpose and love and fulfillment and peace and his goodness just a couple more seconds any more hands we'll pray with you all right i don't say would you everybody pray with me out loud together for these folks that raised their hand this could be a first time this could be a new commitment this could be a recommitment will you pray with me say father god in heaven I ask you to forgive me of the life of sin I might have lived. I confess your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior today. I invite you to come into relationship with me. I want to know you as Father. I want to know my purpose. And I'm grateful today that you brought your goodness to me. And I say, I am saved. In Jesus' name. And everybody said...